very grateful for my scarf this morning, Sandra, I can tell you. Uh, good morning, um, out, I haven't heard anything, I've just been out for the last five minutes, uh, I'm just with the Gatwick guy at the moment. <coughs> yeah, so that was two stations um, talking, I didn't cut anything. Texan, if no one else is talking, I haven't heard anything this morning. I've only been out for about five minutes. I'm with the Gary gang at the moment. Ah, uh, okay, copy that. Uh, morning, Tyler. Is it possible to uh, bring the cards out to those marks asking? And maybe just come and put them on the no entry sign or something. I can drive by and pick them up. Or I can meet you halfway and um, just follow the staff a little. Two. So I think some of you may have missed, missed us this morning and missed me starting and saying hello. Sounds like the, the feed is a little bit choppy this morning. But if you are with us and you can hear me, Maybe I should actually take a break in between every syllable, so hopefully that will actually coincide with the breaks. And then you actually might be able to hear what I'm saying properly. <laughs> but welcome on board. We're with the Gary gang at the moment. My name's Tara, Mark's on camera, and Sebastian's in final control. <coughs> We're with a, very de oh, a group that's depleting very rapidly, very sadly. I wonder if they're going to disappear over the back here. But the two little ones, the smallest one's a little Genesis. Um, Evelyn is the larger one of the two. I think she was born in November, I think, last year, if I remember rightly. Oh, they're going to disappear over the back, so I'm going to pull out.
Graham, hello. How old's little Genesis now? Yeah, it is nearly four months. And Evelyn, was she? Six or seven months. Oh, so it was February she was born, was it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I keep forgetting. <laughs> I keep thinking she was born in November. <laughs> Yeah. There they go. They're gonna go out the back. There's our broadcasting mess for anybody that's never seen it before. So yes, just want to check with Graham while he was here. So Evelyn was born February. So I overshot the mark a little bit more. There. And little Genesis is about four months old. I remember February came into it. I remember last time I got it wrong. I don't know why, I keep forgetting. Evelyn was born in February. I keep having a mental block on that one. We've just got to go back to camp quickly. If we meet Sebastian on the way with something we've got to pick up. And then we shall head down towards the dam. Have a scratch around there. This Morning everyone, Mark here. Just wanted to say good morning quickly. <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me. And just wanted to mention that uh, I left something behind, so we just had to come back and get it quickly. And we'll be on our way in a sec. So I can <coughs> sneak away, you can enjoy the peace. Mark 
Okay. Carry on then. Garrigan might have come out this way. Maybe they went further west, maybe they went towards Ingers. start their chattering. They're quite loud actually. Well, you can do better than that. I've heard you. <laughs> Chick's having a bit of a set to at the back there. If you look carefully... She's usually much louder than that, although they were getting there. There we go. <laughs> I think it's been outcompeted by the family close to the lodge. You can hear them. Oh. Those two chicks are really not liking each other. Oh. <laughs> and if we're able, able to get them, they're chasing after each other. We 
You keep coming back for more. Yeah. So this isn't a tell Franklin. If you look carefully, they've got orange legs and orange beak. <laughs> We're really not happy with each other. you doing up there? Come on, you can do it. There we go. So funny bobbing along. Now you may have seen on one of the close-ups of the Natal Franklin, the little spurs on the back of the legs, which they use for... Yeah, we were that close to them. Uh, well, we may may have not seen. I thought I saw them, but I knew where to look for them. But uh, they use when they're fighting. You may have noticed the Franklins sort of turning over and, and actually using the legs at one stage, whereas the guinea fowl actually just chase after each other. And it's a it's a stamina thing, a stamina competition. Whoever can last is the winner. And they do prefer to run usually than fly. Hmm. Tell Drongo is displaying again. Hi Gilly, welcome on board this morning. Good to hear from you. I've got the Fort Tail Drongo's duetting. I saw this once the other day. 
First time that I saw him. We were singing in unison. There's a small bush on the front left with the flowers. Sorry? A small tree in the front left with the flowers. This one? Mm -hmm. Yes. I wondered where this was. Quite a conservative approach to the, the whole mating subject. I thought how drawn this. What are those guinea fowl upset by now? They're chattering away. Dumbea tundifolia. Common wild pear. Let's roll back a bit. Something is definitely upsetting those guinea fowl now. They've gone from a very soft chuk 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 to that loud cackling call. It's usually known as the bride of the bush because it's usually one of the first trees to start flowering. A beautiful white blossom if you've got a lot of these common wild pairs around. And if you've got some very tall trees and they just start to blossom, it is absolutely stunning to see. And around me, if I'm going to see if we can get a little bit closer, I'm just watching to see if there's any movement in the bush there. Well, there could have been a bird flying over. You see something? Pardon? Did you see something over there? Oh, it was in front of Hello. Putting it to the side while Graham was putting in the book. Oh. It's in Parliament. Oh, that's in Parliament. No, I just thought you would see movement over there. Yeah, in Parliament. Or something. I don't want to go and pick a leaf because <coughs> it doesn't really have that many. <coughs> the little hairs on the back of the leaf should form like a star, and if you look, if you actually look down the microphone, uh, microphone, and microscope, you can actually see it. As I say, unfortunately, I think it needs all its leaves, otherwise, I'll actually show it to you. But they've got almost like um, a Velcro kind of feel to it on the underside and you can actually stick it to close. It's quite a... Not overly rough, but it, you can feel that roughness underneath. Although I don't think you want to go eating these pears. I'm not going to be able to do the Afrikaans any justice. Are you good at pronouncing? Pardon? Are you good at pronouncing the Afrikaans for this? Vilapia. I don't yeah. know, what is it? Dropia. Dropia. If I've got the right pronunciation. <laughs> Why dropia? Because apparently <coughs> they, they named it after the fruit because the fruit tastes so so bad. Isn't that much of a fruit? Hmm? Yeah, but they, the, the fruit that there is, oh. it, it's, 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 it tastes like animal droppings. Oh. <laughs> I've never tried it myself. <coughs> <coughs> oh, there you go.
go. You can see those white blossoms. Shall we go? Because the, the guinea fowl are still coming, but those in parlour are not really that bothered. And the guinea fowl down here aren't really taking much notice. So I think it could be maybe something like a small snake or... They're not really that insistent. They haven't come off the ground, so I don't think it is a big ground protein. See any birds sitting in the trees? I'm still scratching around for things. Maybe there's something just hidden in here. Maybe a mongoose or something. I haven't seen the reactor mongoose. Have you seen the reactor mongoose? No. Or maybe it was just something in here. Maybe a snake. or something, but they're not really that bothered, they're continuing to feed, they're just giving that warning call. I'm scratching the dirt for any seeds. see the remnants of the flowers from the lion ears or the wild duffer. These little balls. There was a question, wasn't there? Sorry, I was right in the middle of answering it, wasn't I? It was... Uh, Franklin's closely related to partridges. No? To game birds in America. And they are related to the partridges, so if the game birds are partridges that you're talking about... Although pheasants, I don't know if they're related to pheasants. Are they related to pheasants, Mark? Uh, gosh, we went through this and I forget now. Yeah, I also I forget. Let's see. Oh, I haven't got my other book out. The other book's good for actually saying who's in what family. Obviously that will just be African species, but at least it'll help. Yeah, this one doesn't have it. around quarantine area because I'm just wondering if something did happen here. It doesn't look like the baboons came out of the garden so we're obviously finding something nice to feed on. Hello Impala. bird was sitting with its back towards us. No. Oh. Catch something. <laughs> Don't fly back again. 
Well, I hope he does. Unfortunately, I just wasn't sitting in the right... The way it was sat with its head low, I actually thought it was an, a little owlet. Couldn't see any colour on it. But it was a roller. And you might notice it doesn't really have a long tail with streamers. And that's because it's not the line breasted. It's the purple roller. And unfortunately, sitting away from us again but you can't so you can't see the streaks down its breast you can see that blunt tail though we're going with central ah <laughs> uh, which ingwe Graham? Um, okay, whereabouts on Central? Yeah, to the uh, Eastern Gary Cut Line, just before the dip. Copy that, thank you. Uh, leopard tracks. Nope, decided not to join us after all. <laughs> It's such a shame actually, the lilac breasted roller in particular, it's such a beautiful bird, you could probably count 12, 15 different colours, I can't remember, maybe actually 17, I'll have to count them again one stage. And uh, they have just a call that just doesn't fit them. I expect this beautiful melody to come out of the, the beaks and actually <laughs> it's quite a harsh, a harsh cry. <laughs> but if anyone can maybe just check for us about the uh, North American game birds if they're related to our Franklins. So the Franklins and Partridge are in the same family. Beautiful line on the Impala this morning. We're just going to do a lap around quarantine and come out at the top of Zoe's Road and then we'll head down Zoe's Road. Let's see if there's anything down there. Female battling with two ox peckers should be coming into view very shortly. But Gilly, noticing the, the number of guinea fowl and are they protected because there seems to be so many. And they, they are used for a food source. And what are we in now? September. Oh, no, you don't want to be eating guinea fowl this time of year. The months without an R in it is when you can eat guinea fowl. That covers the winter months. But months with R's, it actually falls inside the spring, the summer. And that's when the, they actually have a lot of worms. You might have a few problems there by eating guinea fowl. But as far as I know, they're not protected because they are they are so common. Although numbers have been falling apparently across the country. There's a red-billed oxpecker and sitting on the back of the impala. <clears throat> and you might even hear almost like a box of matches rattling, and that's the oxpecker calling. Now who's that just down to the left? Is there a little blue wax bill? 
Yes, it is. A little blue wax bill. Is he sunning itself? <laughs> no, the one just behind it. Yeah, it does look like there's a pair. Now oh, these little birds are tiny. And sometimes they'll actually... Oh, where are you guys going? There's someone else over there. These little birds will quite often build a nest very close to wasp nests. And they actually use them as protection from predators. And they don't seem to get bothered by them at all. Beautiful little birds, very distinctive. You can't really mistake them for anything else. I just thought my eyes were deceiving me with that bright blue. And actually, as they go into the breeding season, as what we are, the, the males become this beautiful, stunning blue. It looks like he is actually, that's, that's possibly why I noticed him, because his colour is starting to come through very nicely now. They do get a little bit duller over winter. Just repeat the name for me again, who, who said that? Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Wendy's saying that the game birds are all part of the same family. I thought they were, but I just wasn't 100% sure. Oh, I do wonder if a giraffe went that way. Maybe that's what the Oxpacker saw. Giraffes. Tracks heading that way. Franklins, partridges, pheasants and quails, all part of the same family. In fact, I was thinking about pheasants. Hmm. I remarked Babbler's calling. I was just flicking through a book last night and saw the Reeves pheasant. And I actually used to work with a number of pheasant, pheasants. Many pheasants from Asia are actually highly endangered. Alison, good morning to you, over there in California. So I'm just having a look at these little tracks down here, there's some nice, 
Well, I'll say clear, fairly clear. I don't know if they're going to come out on camera. They do look like African wildcat tracks. I'll maybe see if we can jump off. Have a look at them. And oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, there was some information that came through. Sorry, I just got completely sidetracked. Tell you what, I'll have a quick look and then I'll come back to to you that. Tracking book. <coughs> Yeah, a little bit. Maybe if I can hang it. Yeah, it's coming in fast. Um. Shaking in the camera because <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get I can't get any more length. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the the best that can be able to do at this stage. Do you want me to give you a bit more length? Mm -hmm. to I'm just I can't hold this thing steady because it's I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, it's the, the camera, the battery wire that's preventing it from uh, coming okay. down. Okay. 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 Tell everybody, sure sorry about the shaking. Yeah, sorry, everybody. But, you can see here, we've got the, uh, the microphone. Oh, we've got it open, so good. That's good. Hang on, check hang on, I don't know if I can hear it. Uh, yeah, you still got that one. Yeah, but that's at the front mic, it's not on the front. Oh, okay. Fine now. Okay, can everybody hear me? Talk to Sebastian. One. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So everyone can hear me. Alrighty. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. So, if you can see this, I'm hoping that the sun's casting enough shadow. And that's one, one of the important things when you're tracking or looking at tracks is to have the sun then the track and you stand behind the track so that you can actually get the shadows forming by the sun whereas sometimes in the heat of the day which is not great for, for tracking but uh, sometimes you do actually need to cast a shadow but um, this time of day brilliant sunlight and it casts these really nice shadows so you can actually see the detail now this is what we're looking at so we've got the toes here and then the back pad just here and the toes here and the back pad here. So I'm going to give you a bit of a refresh <laughs> because only two people came back from the tracking quiz last time. So we're going to have a bit of a refresh and then uh, hopefully go into the quiz next week. So it gives everyone a sporting chance. So this one's quite a, a, an interesting one. I haven't seen the tracks here uh, for a little while, but um, these are actually quite, quite nice and this is the African wildcat this will be the front paw this will be the back paw and if you have a look in the book so this is one thing I love about this book is is especially when you have the the pages with the right size tracks like this so this is actual size you can almost see that the size 
is pretty much perfect. So you can see that quite nicely. And you can see this is quite spaced out, which is what the backtrack is. I think it actually looks like some it, it almost twisted its foot. There is a little bit of detail that's sort of enlarged. But you can see, as I say, the size of it and the, the front pad as well, pretty much exactly as the book. And even, uh, this is the other reason why I'm saying, is that the toes are just coming below this back pad. Whereas, as you can see, I've drawn a line here and the toes should just come level with the pad. So something happened here, or his foot must have just slipped, because the toes do drop just a little bit. A bit on here, you can see quite nicely the toes fairly close to the back pad here. And you can see fairly oval toes. And that's... Oh, <laughs> I'll put my finger in it. But you can see that almost nicely there. So that is the African Wildcat. And the only other thing that you can really get it confused with, or well, the other two cats, is the server and the caracal, but you're looking at much larger cats. The African Wildcat, if I actually take from that track to that track, it's the front of the, each front track, and you're looking about an animal about that sort of size, which is roughly about the same body length as the cat. But these cats are much, much larger. I mean, you're looking at, at this is also actual size. So you can see already the back track there. You can see already if it was serval, the track should be coming much further along. And the same with the front track. So it's also... I can't follow your hand so far. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Did you, could you see, can you see yeah. this at all? Oh, you can see this, okay, cool. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's why I actually really enjoy using this particular book for tracking in Africa. Lee Liebenberg. Very, most of the, the spore is, is very accurate. I haven't found a problem, but I know a couple of other people say it's, it's, probably the best book that they've used. So African Wildcat walked around here. And so did one of the vehicles. If you're actually knowing the vehicle tracks of everybody in the lodge, you can actually see who's been driving up and down, but I never take too much notice. Actually the Gunda, not the Gunda, somebody with jigger tracks was driving up here at some stage. But the jig is the only one I know. Cool. Let's jump aboard. <coughs> I'm like an old man. Sorry, I wasn't even thinking what you were doing. I was trying to concentrate on just getting a picture of something. <clears throat> but now I've got to get back on the vehicle. Oh. Somehow. Remember, true cats have the three lobes, but sometimes it's not always easy to see that from that track. You couldn't really see. I say it was one of the clearest tracks I've seen, but you still couldn't see that. It's been up and, up and down here. Not. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> Probably the closest track you can actually have a look at is your if you've got a domestic cat at home. Have a look at their tracks and you'll see no clause registering. <clears throat> So if we can maybe just have that information through you again, so now that my mind's not distracted. I think Da Freak <laughs> was sending some information through as well, which I didn't get to. <clears throat> Yeah, if you can just send through the information from Dafrik and uh, the information that was sent through before as well. <coughs> Partridge and Franklin. Thanks, Afrique. Mm, some bird information there. Apparently, the North American game birds are in a separate family. Giving me a breakdown of the individual families. So I'll have a look at that and come back with hopefully uh, a better understanding where North American game birds fit into the whole the whole system there so hopefully I can give you a bit more information on that on afternoon drive. Thanks a lot for sending that through Daffy. And then just before I jumped out to have a look at the track who's who sent through information again. <coughs> uh, there was some information you sent through just as I was jumping out to have a look at the track so I got distracted by the track. here wasn't it ah that was it Alison sorry not Anne Alison so it was here that you were looking in here okay Alison we haven't seen the limping giraffe uh, since I last saw it I, think it was, we, I don't think it's probably moved too far from where we saw it on triple M this way, he may have gone, or she, I think it was a she, wasn't it? Could have gone further west, but we haven't been down Triple M for quite a while. Oh, I'm busy looking over there thinking it's all nice and clear as we go through here. Oh, is that too my mount? Okay. I thought you said over here. Question really from Mark, because we're over a thousand again, are they going to get a chicken dance from you, Mark? And have you got your phone out? Your foot. Oh, 
water. Have you got your sauna at your foot? Now they're going to get a chicken dance. Because we're over a thousand. So no, he's got too many sores in his feet. Can have a quick look over by that termite mound. <laughs> Might have just been out of here. That beautiful liquid whistle. Oh, long tailed shrikes. We had a thousand viewers last night. Hmm? Oh, yes. There they are, both of them. that has gone off to hunt. <laughs> they obviously were watching us going, what are these people doing? Really? <laughs> I bet your fans were saying, do you think they spotted us yet? No, I don't think so. Look at her. She's going all around the houses. Sun's rays are going to be dousing them with now. And oh, that that was the last part. Sorry, Tommy, I didn't hear the last part. Asking if the elef if the elephants. See, my brain is just not switched on this morning. The wild dog. <laughs> it's because they're from the elephant plains. As we had a report of five adults and six pups on elephant plains last night. It must have been where they were denning. And Tammy wanting to know were the wild dogs, and I'm sure a few other people wanting to know if the wild dogs will make their way over to Juma. And we are hoping, maybe over the next month or so, if they are, or if they have been denning over there. <coughs> And there is a big possibility that they could come this way. But they roam over very large areas. And you're looking at, for a, a pack, sometimes can cover 24,000 hectares. So only really when the denning is the immediate area marked as uh, for territory, for, for protection. Because obviously they don't want other packs coming in and, and killing pups. So there is a possibility that packs overlap with each other at boundaries and maybe towards the centre, maybe not too much, but there is always a possibility they can run through each other's home range. So that's There's a lot of research going on into the wild dog, and I think they actually thought they had more wild dog in the Greater Kruger, which is where we are, than what they actually do. And if you do take pictures of wild dog, then uh, the organisation within Kruger do do like to hear about it, and that's how they've actually found that they don't have as many wild dogs as they thought. Because when they were getting pictures of wild dog by Orpen and then further down the south, and even here in the Sabi Sands, they actually thought there were two separate packs. And when they actually looked at the pictures, they were able to find that actually they were the same pack. What have you spotted, Shivenzi? She needs to let everybody know. Stations have uh, got the two Mantuan from Karula, same place as last night, off of Zoe's Road. So clever. <coughs> I know. <laughs> It's such a shame. Last night, 
And we lost you. I think Shivenzi was chasing. Was she still chasing the squirrel at that stage? No, she was sleeping right next to me. Oh, she came right up to Mark. So I don't know if you saw her chasing the squirrel. Well, no, it started that. getting dark and then she came and crawled up next to us. Uh, she did. She came right up to the gun drawing and decided to curl up and sleep. I think I need to just pull forward a little bit because I think we're going to lose... Oh no, you can see her still. If she climbs that tree, I think we're going to lose her behind... Squirrel <laughs> again. Yeah, I think so. She's going to try and chase a squirrel. I'm just going to move forward quickly. Too much. There we go. Hi, Miss Chris, and uh, you might have just missed the announcement uh, within the sands. And we wanted to call him Shava because he was. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't expecting that. He has been quite, quite shy, and he, he picks up on his mother's and sister's boldness, and, and when when she is around. Oh. Oh. Oh, sure. Okay. We're not having much luck with the leopards when they're climbing the trees after squirrels. Wow, Sounds like you must have missed them. Huh? Sounds like everybody missed it. Only it froze. I'm just going to keep pulling around here so we can get some nice light on the two cubs again. Oh, awesome. Okay, well, at least, at least Mark recorded. So we might be able to do something. Not yet. Not yet. Wait for us. Wait for us. Now that I'm putting around here. So unfortunately Miss Chris didn't hear me answering her, so I was just in the middle of answering. Let's try again. Ooh, there's a beautiful photo opportunity there. So I think, Miss Chris, you may have missed the, uh, the announcement on last, the last Safari TV drive. That's when we actually announced the cubs' names. And the little male, uh, we, we wanted to call them bold and shy because uh, the female is just incredibly bold and she, she's got no fear. I mean, we've seen her walking right up to, to Mel Impala, who's busy alarming at them. We've seen her walking right up to Hyena. And chasing them off. You know, she really has no fear. But unfortunately, the guides didn't like Shava, which means shy, for the little male. So they, I think they're going to hopefully decide a name at a meeting on, is it Thursday? On the 8th? Yeah. No. What are we on today? The 6th, so... Time. Yeah, no, it is Thursday. I thought we were on Wednesday for some reason. So hopefully we'll have a name for him. But it was only very recently did their characters really start to come out, and that was one of the reasons why we're holding off. Also, because it's usually a year, year and a half old when they're actually given names, because cub mortality is very high usually. 
that's why they don't want to name cubs until they've reached adulthood really. Looks like she's almost digging for something at the base of the tree there. <laughs> and also we didn't want to have two names. I mean we could have named them straight right from the start, but we didn't want to have two names for the cubs because it does get a little bit confusing at times. So we wanted to make sure everybody across the board would call the, the leopards the same so we can keep up with the movements. <clears throat> so that was the reasons why we were holding off. So Shava they didn't like, but Shavenzi meaning bold, everyone agreed to. So the little female is called Shavenzi who we're watching now. And I find the easiest way to identify her, well both of them, is actually the spots above the whisker line. You can actually see there's a big size difference between the two now. She's slightly darker than he is, you can see that quite nicely now. But maybe if we can zoom in on little male, you can see there's two spots, very large spots, above the whisker line. <coughs> And quite often you can actually see that quite nicely. He turns around. Which ones are you talking about? <laughs> he needs to turn around first. <laughs> there we go. You can see really bold. Just above the whisker line, those two spots side by side. You beautiful boy. And the lines between his eyes on his forehead Actually, th there's about three of them that are all parallel. So they're all, all about equal spacing as well, and all about the same. Whereas Chivenzi's, there's slightly different angles and slightly different spacing between her eyes. But he's not going to help us, is he? He's too busy watching what his sister's doing. a problem so if she becomes too sure of herself that might be a downfall whereas the little boy's a little bit more cautious he seems to sit and watch and see if, if things are going to be all right yeah, you're just trying to get a vantage point there little girl and he's going to come and join a look We'll sniff around where she's been looking. <laughs> okay, is he going to jump up? Looks like it. Shrike's giving the alarm call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my tree, you're not coming up. Stop me. It's funny, every time I've seen her in the tree, she's always the higher one. She has to take that, <laughs> the high road. Long tail strike, really not happy with him being here and just making sure that everybody knows there's danger around.
It does sound like Karula had something small yesterday. And I went to go and get a drink from the kitchen during uh, during the drive. My next door neighbour Jess, who's a chef at Boyatella, came running up to me and said, "Karula's out the back here, in the drainage line with the with the cubs." So we went to go and have a quick look, and sure enough, she's there. You could actually just stand on the stoop of the house and see Karula and the cubs there. And she actually moved away from where she was sitting. It did look like she, she was finishing eating something. And as soon as she moved, the cubs went in to have a look of what she... see if she'd left anything. But I think it must have been something quite small. And I think someone was asking a question about that the other day, whether Karula would actually sacrifice a meal for them. And as I say, I think especially something small she needs to keep her energy up so she can carry on providing for them stuck. yeah you're stuck eh? <laughs> this is their school learning how to balance on the smallest of branches for that time when maybe they're chased by a lion or another leopard So they're actually learning a lot of things, balance and how far up the branch they can go before it starts to give way. And they're going to have to know all of these things to be able to take their meal up into the tree safe from hyenas. <laughs> Looks like she's actually trying to move the branch with her. There you go. looking in this direction. They are. I thought I saw something over there. There was actually a long tailed shrike that <coughs> flew down to the side of the road and I think maybe they're watching because there's another bird actually actually going into the same spot yet, yeah. Hornbill. I wonder if she's going to go and have a look and see what they're, they're all flying in to, to, to go and feed on. So that's exactly where she's looking now. <laughs> Curiosity, eh? <coughs> above his whisker line, Chavenzi actually has two spots, one above each other, and then a little upside down V above her whisker line. <coughs> Excuse me. And definitely has the look of a mother. Karula look. The second litter was two males, and the third litter being one male, one female. Oh, he's seen something I don't think he quite likes. <laughs> he's watching something over in the north now. And I think a lot of differences, 
just depends on the character. Because again, we saw with Mishu and Induna, Mushu tended to be a lot more independent like Shivenzi. Oh, I can hear the roller. Can we roll? Don't look up with your mouth open. It might have just been a little bit too high for you to hear, but maybe you heard it. Stations uh, still have the two Mantuan on Zoe's Road, uh, Kulu's Mountain Pass. <coughs> Standing by. Morning, uh, how are you? Good, thanks, Andrew. How are you? I'm well, thanks. So then we go Kulu's uh, not here, just the Mantuan. Yeah, just the two. Affirmative. That open clearing uh, just north uh, on Zoe's Road. They're just lying lying down at the moment in the clearing. And even at this age, they're going to be able to hunt insects and small birds, rodents, as you saw with the squirrel, maybe even scrub hares. Maybe. Uh, I wouldn't put it past Shivenzi to actually go and tackle a Dacre or a Steenbok. But it's really the size that limits them from what they can can catch and, and the muscle and the power and that's one of the reasons why play and climbing and all those sorts of things are very important because they're actually building up those muscles so as they get stronger and more skillful then they have a greater chance of hunting successfully for the larger, larger prey species He's chosen exactly the same spot to sit in as his sister did. Exactly, that's what I thought. I've never heard of that before. No. Come okay, it sounds like Franklin. So go and have a check. Yeah, She's like also. Franklin. She was also. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear it. it's normal call now. Shelley's Franklin. I'll drink your beer. I'll drink your beer. Open 
hearing the, the strikes coming a bit further down here, probably about the same place. There they are, they're in the tree. Frank, can you just call once more for us? Franklin chirping, like chirping, yeah. Oh, just here. No. No, I mean, yeah, that's right. Responding to that alarm call. And again, things like that will also help them as they get older, because it may mean that an alarm call like that, there's a possibility that they might be able to steal somebody's food, or if it's a lion, maybe at least wait. until lines are finished that they may be able to scavenge a little bit from them. So not just hyenas will pick up on the alarm calls and commotion. Guinea far feather. This one. No. Old though. Yeah. Deep foul feathers. Do you want for your hat? No, they're not mine. Well, that one is. No. <laughs> you can see the spots from the guinea fowl on it. This is going to be lying probably around the breast of the bird. You can see it's nice and fluffy and this is going to be able to help insulate the bird. It's going to be closer to the body. Whereas this is going to be one of the feathers that are further away from the body. It doesn't look like a flight feather because the shaft runs straight up the middle. Whereas if it's a flight feather, it'll be just offset. There you go, there's a couple of differences from the feathers there. Okay. Well, the long tail strikes have gone that way. There's some more alarming down that way. Hmm? Can you hear some more? I can hear a lot of questions earlier, so I think. Well, who knows? I still 
convinced we do have serval still around. Birds are chattering. That's a good possibility. Sorry? Thinking what? Check down that way. Let's see what they're up to. Little boy hasn't changed his position. Shavenzi's still watching. Sorry, girl. I didn't find anything. I don't know if she would have seen anything, but their eyesight is so much better than ours. So I think it's somewhere around six times better than our eyesight. Little boy's lost interest. Oh, coming down. And the heat's starting to come through now quite nicely. I'm just gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, I think he's probably gonna start chasing after something. There we go, it's the birds in the tree. <laughs> Little brother, what you doing? <laughs> Just see if we're actually going to start playing a little bit, but it's starting to get a little bit warm. Mm. I'm just going 
see what he's going to go and have a look at in the dead tree. As much as I want to stay with them, I think let's go and see if we can head down towards Treehouse Dam or at least along here, maybe to the hyena den. Let's see if we can't get lucky with what spooked those guinea fat uh, Franklin. Anybody wanting to send any questions, send them through to questions at juma.com. This is always the uh, the difficulty. Do you stay or do you go? It could be that they just start to sleep for three hours now. But one thing with cats is that you know they do like to they move fairly often, even if they're sleeping, having a cat nap. At some stage, they might just get up and scratch or move around or wash themselves. Or if there's something that pops out the bush. They become awake and active immediately. And I think that's possibly one of the big big draws to the carnivores. And why they're such charismatic creatures. Because they do, they, they have this, obviously, beauty about them. And they remind us of our own pets, cats and dogs. We've always had an affinity with those particular types of animal. A long affinity. And I think the fact that, I mean, every animal is unpredictable, but I think the predators are probably one of the most unpredictable. And just like we had with the lions the other day, you never know what's going to come out of the bush. The, the lions were busy sleeping and we were just about to leave. We heard a trumpet and the herd of elephants came walking through and chased the lions from their, their kill and from their sleep. Hi Jojo. Just saying they've got white on the back of their ears as well as the tip of the tail. Is this also for communication? And yes it is. Ears and tail are two of the most important ways of communication, especially with the cats. Facial expressions as well, but you can see even now she's walking away, you can see the ears and the tail. And that's how they can communicate. I'm just going to see if she is going to go to a brother. She's going to go and lie with him. Or jump on him. Payback. <laughs> Away 
when she was in the tree. Definitely given some great photo opportunities this morning. I'll move that. And also that's one of the ways that we've been able to understand their character is just by spending time and watching them and getting to know them and allowing them to get to know us and that, I think that's one of the most important things is actually allowing these animals to to understand you and to actually understand that we're not going to hop too close to them we're going to just let them do what they want Okay, well let's leave them to it and maybe see if we can come back a little bit later. know if we've ever had an experience with Franklin and if we do we have Franklin's around camp mm -hmm. yeah that's where I'm trying to get to we have Franklin's around camp and there was one that was getting so used to us it was actually coming and demanding to give him some grain or something. Don't talk about the plate the other morning while I was eating. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they'd just stop that last year. I was just going to say last year. If you remember, I had the, the vulture expert come in, Patrick Benson. And he said he was staying with us. And at that stage, it, there wasn't too much water around. The food was very scarce. And the, the Franklin actually jumped onto his cereal bowl. <laughs> and he was so taken aback by it. He was fine about it, but he was so taken aback by it. And <laughs> Mark's just saying that the same thing happened again yesterday. Cheeky. But they're often called the heart attack birds as well. Jack also called them the heart attack birds. Because when you're out walking, they'll wait and wait and wait until you ride on top of them. And they'll wait hidden in a bush and then all of a sudden they'll fly up. And obviously you're looking out for danger. Actually amazing how many Franklins and how few Franklins probably get shot because it is just such a start. And especially when you're walking, you walk usually with a rifle in South Africa. If you're taking guests out on a walk. Time 
time you've actually just gone whoa, and reacted, then you suddenly realise it's actually a Franklin. Andrew, Andrew, come in. Yeah, go. Um, leaving the lock of the Montuan, there's still the Lalapans, uh, just by, there's a, a fallen down tree uh, next to the telegraph pole on the Zoe's Road on that, that open section. So if you just go to that telegraph pole and you see to the south of it, there's a fallen down tree. There were just uh, Lalapans there. Okay, so it's fake, uh, Tara. They on the... Yeah, on the other side of a uh, uh, driveway, something all of that. Uh, southern side, there on that that open patch at the end of Zoe's Road on the northern end, of Zoe's Road, western side. Okay, so we think that I'll uh, come in now. Yeah, if you take that little two track uh, that runs along underneath the pylon, and it's that first telegraph pole to the south, as the fourth down tree from there. Okay, thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, and also, I think a few people were asking how they can help keep the drives going and if you'd like to actually watch the waterhole channel in between drives that also will contribute to keeping the drives up and running. Hello Shrike, where is the problem? Let's go and check out the hyena den. More giraffe traps. Have a look at the giraffe track. Maybe the L2. Maybe just lift the camera over the side. Yeah. Or should we just try and drive alongside it? That's for you. Uh, what is it? So if I park here and you can just drop it off the side, that might be just as easy. Are we alongside a nice one there? No. Okay, so I'm just going to jump out and show you the draft track. Sebastian? Well, I can, but it could be a bit louder. Okay, hopefully you can hear me. So, here's the draft track, and you can see it's quite a big, big size. So, actually, where's my little ruler? And I can tell you exactly. So, much larger than obviously our little African wildcat, because there's a considerable size difference. We've got so 14 centimetres plus about another five. So you're looking at about 19 centimetres, 19, 20 centimetres long for a giraffe track. And you might be able to see this ridge here of the sand because it's a cloven hoofed animal. So the sand, especially when they go into thick sand, you'll see this ridge quite nicely between the two sides of the hoof. Because it's cloven hoofed, it's two parts to the hoof. So there you go. So it's actually walking almost, it's on its toenail, or what would be the R equivalent. And obviously, theirs are elongated and formed a lot better for walking right on the tip of the, the, the bone and also the foot, the toenail. 
got the other one here. Actually, I can't sit at weird angles for long. Sorry, and that means that the camera moves too much. Just thinking, I don't have a tape measure, but we were wanting to check the stride. Yeah, on mine, it's in my book. I should. I normally keep it in here. Oh. But it's so we don't have a tape measure. No. I suppose a meter. Yeah, is that's about that. a stride, isn't it, for a human? Yeah, well, that's about a meter and a half between that foot Although and that. Although it did, it did do something funny here. It's not walking. Actually, this one's probably better. So one, two, two and a bit. So about two meters for a stride. Kind of. There you go, you can see the ridge again forming here. Thick as sand. It's this bit of ridge. And also, you might just be able to see on this one, is the little indentation here. There in the front one, you can see it even better. Are you, are you on that one? Also? No, I'll go to that one, but mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So you can see the indentation. So as you walk, your toe comes into contact with the ground last. It's the front part of your foot and it's the same with giraffe, it's the same with cats to a certain degree. But most hoofed animals you'll find a little indentation from that last part of the foot that comes into contact with the ground. And that maybe we can actually try and show you on an elephant track as well and that's how it gives you direction as well. So if you can't quite work it out it's quite an easy little way to see the direction the animal's heading in. You don't see it as much with the cats, especially the smaller cats and smaller animals, because obviously the weight is not as heavy as something like a giraffe or an elephant. So the bigger the animal, the more that indentation flicks in, or even how soft the ground is as well. So if you've got very, very soft ground, and you see that indentation a lot more than if you've got hard ground. I saw there was actually a shadow somebody no. not seeing it. Okay. I'm sitting out here. I'm here. Yeah, it's just that open area. Just okay. ride it just before you get to. Right. This side of the power line. Okay. Yeah. There's but two. If you follow that little two track, mm -hmm. then you'll see there's the pole. There are two trees that are down together. Yeah. Two little old knob thorns. Oh, okay. Alrighty. That one's for the. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh, okay. Some just, uh, oh, no. Thanks, Thank you very much. See you, Mark. See you, Andrew. Bye, Bye everyone. So, 
apparently the giraffe walked backwards along the street. The sun by the end of Zoe's road. He walked backwards. He walked backwards. Yeah. yeah. Huh? He walked backwards. Yeah. Oh, apparently they can't hear me, but they can hear you. Ah, uh, they quite? They can hear you, but they can't hear me. Is that better? Ah. Uh -huh. I can't believe it's been over a year since I, since I saw you. It was was it last April or this April? I think it must have been last last April. I forget now. I tell you my, my brain is really not functioning well this morning. Last April. So I think it was before, wasn't it? Yeah. Can I hear you? Where are you? Oh, there you are. So it's going to be too, too high up in the tree for so. But I was wondering the same. I wondered if the warthog that got killed by Mbula, you know, I can't get it, it's just too far back in the branches. Lilac breasted roller. Don't taunt me, if you're not going to come out and play. spot. But I do wonder if it was George. George was a warthog that I took pictures of and he used to come into camp and I haven't seen him. And I think that might have been the warthog that was killed by Mbula. He used to come into camp and around the lodge. And he looked big enough to be George. Second one. The second one. Yeah. The second. He killed two warthogs, didn't he? The one that me and Seth saw. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw his head. No, no, I was just thinking. I haven't seen him. And actually, when I saw it, I thought, I wonder if it's him. But I'll keep my eye, eyes peeled. Maybe he's just away. Maybe he's, he's just not in the area at the moment. He's found good food elsewhere, but I think that's clutching at straws, really. Because actually, this time of year, you see warthogs around the lodge a lot more. The feeding opportunities, especially if you have lodges who have a lot of grass, a lot of green lawns and they actually water the lawns. You've got this beautiful oasis in this time of drought. Well, it's not drought, it's not really drought, it's the normal weather pattern. Wow, there's a nice road. Let's just form there now. <laughs> yeah, I've never noticed that before. Yeah. Anybody home?
Wow. It's actually smelling. It's got a nice whiff of it. Nobody at home. Probably a little bit too warm now. It's the bush there. The adults actually sleep further away from the den, just probably to get a bit of peace and quiet from the cubs. And also, Eugene was in the chat room last night, mentioned about shop, merchandise, selling through a virtual or online shop. Um, we'll definitely give you the details as soon as we know when it's up and running. Because at the moment, I don't think it's up and running as yet. As soon as we do hear that it's up and running, we'll let you know. And we'll give you the details. Hmm? Oh, yes, there was giraffe down there. That's what I was heading down there, wasn't it? Yep. So I didn't quite copy that message. Go again. Actually, when you were saying Gilly Jean yesterday, I kept thinking Billy Jean. <laughs> Gilly Jean. <laughs> yeah. And I was hearing Duna and I was getting very confused. But yes, it is Mvula that has the blue eyes. We wanted to know how many different coloured eyes do leopards have. Well, I've only ever seen blue and yellow. Reflex. I don't actually do that. I don't think I have seen flecks of green. No, I have. I've seen flecks of green in, in leopard eyes, but not completely green eyes. As far as I know, it is just the yellow and the blue. 
white cloth also had very blue eyes. But all leopards have blue eyes when they're first born and it seems to disappear usually after about two weeks, 10 days, two weeks. But they may go quite pale. Hello, Kudu. They may go quite pale. Because we did see that the two month old lion cubs still fairly pale. And I think I, I remember doing some research and it did say that sometimes they, they can go to this pale colour before they turn yellow. For a couple of months. Quite a young cutie as well. Where's the rest of your herd? Maybe that's why it's a little bit skittish. Maybe it's been separated from them. Hearing a lot of brown hooded parrots as well. Yeah, it is. It's very, very skittish. She's looking over there, so unless her herd's gone that way. Yeah, she's pulled back. Yeah, it is. And usually, a kudu this age would actually be... And an oxpecker just flew on her back as, as we started to reverse. And she she went down as if she was gonna spring up again and run off. Hi Bets. Good to hear from you. I'm wondering if the lions have any collars on them or is it just the windmill pride and why is it just them? And as far as I know none of the other prides or coalitions in the area do have collars. And I think there was still a big question mark as to whether it was the Wilmer, Wilmer Pride we saw March, April, May-ish, sometime last year. I know a lot of the guides were saying it was the Wilmer Pride, but then other guides were saying it wasn't the Wilmer Pride, so I think there was still a big question mark after that sighting. But whoever it was, As far as I know, they're the only ones in the area. And it's usually animals from Kruger that are collared for research purposes. And they usually only collar one animal within a pride or a herd. Because with, with them being social animals, the chance of that one being on its own is, is very remote. So you, you're most likely to find it with its family. So there's no, no reason to actually put the rest of the, the family under stress by darting it and putting a collar on it. Because that's the only way you can get a collar onto the wild animals is to actually dart it, sedate it, and then put the collar on. And the collar is loose enough that you know, it's not going to cause a problem to them, but tight enough so it's not going to fall off. And the only collar adult animals because if you start collaring young animals, first of all, the stress is going to be extremely high. And in a young animal, that can actually be quite detrimental. But also, if you do collar a small animal, you're going to have to change the collar regularly. 
Well, that's affirmative. Good morning, uh, uh, just trying to get hold of uh, some of the players with Peter Fain's Copy. Uh, Andrew should be able to copy you. I know he's on uh, Western Gary at the moment. I think the rest are in the north. You can see she's not relaxed. There we go. So apparently the Salalas, this is what we're talking about limes, the Salalas apparently made a kill last night by Arathusa Dam Wall. The sticks male joined them and two Majingilans joined them and now they're chasing Salalas and sticks male all over the show apparently. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, we can't go and drive there. It's uh, interesting information. Very interesting information. But the reason for it, Bets, is to, to study the animals. And as I say, generally the animals come from Kruger. And that's where a lot of the, the research facilities are based, is in Kruger. And the radio collars nowadays generally have a satellite upload. So whenever they come into a, an area, signal, a good signal area, all the data will be uploaded as, as to where the animal has been. I know with the Ingwe Leopard Project, I think it was every six hours, mark where the leopard is. And you'd actually be able to see where the leopard had walked. You don't even need to go out with a telemetry, a radio transmitting device, and actually go and find where the animal is, because that's how they would have to do it originally, when they had a radio collar, to actually use this telemetry. Go and find where the animal is, and then drop down where it was that they were found. So it's a lot less intrusive, but there is a radio tracking device in there, so if you want to go and, and watch the behavior or check upon them, then you can do so. And it does help to understand over a large area the movements of the animals and over a long period of time as well. And the batteries do last quite a, a long time. And Hi Joanne. I couldn't see which uh, if it was the busted or the Koran, but I think judging by the size and I didn't notice any black. Oh, too young giraffe, a little bit skittish as well. Some, something's come through here. What's wrong, yeah. giraffe? Go ahead. Alrighty, we're looking for all three of you guys there. Uh, you guys are, uh, looks like there's a bamba behind this here, yeah, them wall. Uh, but the lala, bamba behind this here. Yes, I think. Possibly a red crested coran. And I'm starting to hear them calling a lot, and you actually hear this clicking. Like that, and then they go into the song before they're actually going to display. And they they quite funny birds. They'll fly up to a couple of meters and then all of a sudden close their wings and drop back down to earth to impress the females. A couple of youngsters. 
probably about a year and a half old, maybe two oh, years. Yeah. Still very fluffy on top of the horns or ossicones. The mother's quite probably somewhere in the bush. Might be a little bit of a distance. Quite often giraffes will, will leave the young for a few hours, especially in a crash. It looks like there's two of them here. Remember that very special day we had about four youngsters. Date was on the cubs. But still, Lalapans apparently sleeping. We had four, four, three or four youngsters. No, it was four youngsters. And then the mothers just came from the northern side of the quarantine open area. The youngsters were on the southern side. And the mothers, it's almost as if they were on a mother's meeting and then broke for, for brunch and came strolling up to the youngsters and each youngster greeted its mum and walked off with it all in a line. <laughs> very, very special to watch. Let's see, they're a little bit wary of us. Possibly because they don't have the guidance from the adult. So it always pays just to be that little bit more wary when you're on your own. Hi, Durham Frank. Welcome on board this afternoon, wondering why we can't drive to where the lions are. Unfortunately, they're on a different property to us. And if we were to drive there, we probably wouldn't get a signal anyway. Because it's actually southwest of Triple M, Gary Main Junction, which is our southwesternmost boundary. And that's where we are notoriously, it's a notorious bad area for signal. I'm wondering if they're watching of the giraffe further down that way. There's a couple of squirrels just behind the head of was the giraffe them. watching. <laughs> yeah. Beyond I've the just been watching them, yeah. Facing each other, three of them. Facing each other round and round the trunk of that tree. I'm hoping I actually heard this right. Uh, Bet's coming back with, uh, she went to visit a, a park which wasn't as large an area as, as the Great Kruger. And I think there was an elephant there with a collar, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, in San Diego Park. And he's got a collar on. I have no idea then. A foot collar? A foot... Uh, so there's a, a... A bracelet around its foot. Oh, there's a couple more giraffes over there. A couple more giraffes. Under half the wrist, one of those... 
Uh, yeah, like I'm just, this. yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. I thought you meant a collar around the neck. I was thinking, why on earth would it have a collar around its neck? But I think that was one of the, the old methods, wasn't it, to have uh, a ring around the foot so that they can actually restrain the elephant if it was being naughty, if it was nah, destroying not things. Not hmm? at the zoo. Yeah, I think it was an old, an old way, wasn't it, to, to stop them moving. Because I know, and, and I think problem animals, I think they do have a way to restrict them and that's usually around the foot. When they giving them a bath or when they've got to do something medical. It's usually on African elephants. They tend to be a little bit more temperamental than Asian. So if you look carefully, Bet, you might see there, there might be a ring on that, that, that foot bracelet. And that's where they might be able to attach a chain. And I don't think it's I don't think it's used in every zoo now. I think they've actually they're actually trying to move away, obviously from that and restricting the animals. But possibly there may be something medically wrong with that elephant that they need to have closer inspection. Maybe the behaviour of that elephant maybe it's a little bit more aggressive than other animals. I think definitely. Um, We'll see if we can try and find out a little bit more about that. Was it the vet saying it was a long time ago? Mm -hmm. No, I think it's fairly recently. I think she's talking about. Sorry? Yeah, they are still at it. Sorry, I didn't catch which animal. Was it the giraffe? Yeah. From D and Diego. Good morning to you. Oh, there's another giraffe down there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, D and J. Sorry. D and J. Seven. Eight. Seven, eight. Mm. What are they watching? I've <laughs> got bookends another here. Another one down the bottom of the jackalberry. There's a pair of bookends watching something. Ooh. I sort of heard it. <coughs> Or even a bark. To D and J wanting to know. Is it D and J or DJ? Since last time, it is D and J. Wanting to ask, wanting to find out if giraffe are on the menu for big cats or whether the size and speed. Did you hear that? Mm. There is something, isn't there? That might have been the kudu that we just saw. Yeah. Let's turn around and go back. The giraffe area. And then again... It's quite far away, so we're all looking down this way. Maybe they actually heard it. Maybe decided... It wasn't much point. Let's just see if we get another one. Maybe there wasn't much point in responding because it's quite far away. This is we're actually talking about giraffe and cats. And the, their size does deter a lot of the smaller cats like the leopard. But I have seen pictures with two leopard and half a giraffe carcass up in the tree. Um. And it was it was a juvenile but not a small, uh, not a baby, it was a juvenile. But I doubt they killed it. I think it was mo more likely 
killed by something else, but then how on earth did they get the paws on it? Why, why did whoever killed it leave it? So there's a very big question mark. And it was two, I think it was two fairly large leopard. So who knows, maybe they, they got it right. But really a giraffe, especially an adult, or even one of these juveniles would be far too big for a leopard. Maybe a baby giraffe if the circumstances were right and there was an adult leopard around and they're shouting at each other I've had a big male leopard with a baby giraffe up the tree mm. and Mark's also saying he's seen a big, big leopard male leopard with a baby giraffe up a tree so babies are vulnerable because they're only about 2 metres tall say only <laughs> it's not 4 or 5 metres tall but giraffe are vulnerable to lion. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Greeting there. And lions in different areas have different techniques. As I know, the lions on my old reserve would actually chase giraffe into an area like this. actually run into a tree and almost knock itself out and that's how they would actually hunt the giraffe. I've also, most of the, the kills of giraffe in other places tend to happen around the water holes where the, the head is at water level so they're not going to be able to see the lion's approach and the lions will actually grab the neck and hold the giraffe down so that they can't do anything. Once the head's down and it's kept down, the giraffe's immobilized. So that's the main thing. That's why giraffes are so wary when it comes to drinking, because they know they're extremely vulnerable in that position. And in Kruger, the lions have learned when the tarmac is wet, there's tarmac roads in Kruger that people can drive on. And Kruger is just about seven k's from us, six, seven k's from us from the boundary at the moment to where we are. And we are joined to the Kruger. We are the Sabi Sands Juma Game Reserve. So the animals can move freely over into Kruger and vice versa. But the lines there have actually worked out if the tarmac's wet, if they chase the giraffe fast enough onto the tarmac, they slip and they fall, and then they can actually pull the giraffe down in the same way. A male giraffe testing the urine of that youngster there. I'm not hearing any more barking and it was quite a distance. So it might be worth us checking up there in a little while but we've got such a nice giraffe sighting here. Dr. Alexi from Kazakhstan. Good to have you on board. Hopefully, you can reach down. I'm not disturbing me. I'm just going to pull around a little bit further. I just wanted to pick. Seems we've done the giraffe trap. I'll show you the giraffe done. So this is a refresher for anyone. <laughs> Ooh, giraffe running in the drainage line there. Make a line. Yeah, look, here they come. Yeah, Ooh, something is going on. Okay, let's go and check. All giraffes are watching. Look at that. I wonder if it is lying. Lying giraffe. Okay. So I'm going to have a look on the other side there. See if you can see what they're looking at.
does the veil the best. Sorry, I wasn't paying any attention there, so I just want to... Yeah, so here comes the wildebeest. They're also joining the giraffe and making the giraffe run. Hmm. Oh, he's now looking in. See, the wildebeest don't seem to be too bothered, but he, they were looking over there. I think we do need to go on the other side, maybe have a scratch around there. But I would have thought we should be able to see something moving here. Especially with them being so skittish. So all the giraffe were looking down here and that's, here, and that's where the wildebeest came from. They shouldn't really be scared of wildebeest. Also somewhere in here. Hyena also may take down baby, baby giraffe. Baboon tracks, giraffe tracks. Where did you see those two giraffes? They were in, just here. They were down in there, so that's where they came from. Yeah, I'm thinking the wildebeest scooped them. Because there's no, there's no tracks here. No, the little bit is the only, but one did look over its shoulder over this way, that's the only. But they were definitely watching where the wildebeest came out of, so I'm sure they were watching the wildebeest. And because they were alert, possibly just spurred them to, because he started running, they decided, well, let's run too. There's nothing there, no cat tracks, and we should see some fresh cat tracks, especially if we heard the possibly crew barking. I say, I would have thought we, from where we were, we should have seen some form of movement here. Sorry, Sebastian, can you send that question again? Randy! Good morning to you in Iowa. Does the male... No? Does the... Male or female? giraffe choose when it comes to mating what do they look for uh, the female generally will accept a mate and she'll generally go for the older darker looking giraffe and giraffes generally get darker as they get older so these big Males who are almost black in colour. So there's another giraffe there. Yeah, I think they must have just been spooked by the wildebeest. And it's 
possibly the, the darker the giraffe. The better he can cope with heat, so maybe better genes to pass on to his offspring. But they also say that she also, oh sorry lady, it's just a little bit close for you, hey? Sorry girl. They also say that the, the smellier the male, the more likely a female is to choose him. They do have a lot of chemicals. I think they actually decided there was about 11 chemicals found in the fur of a giraffe. One of them being the chemical that's found in dung that actually makes dung smell. And those chemicals will help to reduce the amount of ticks and external parasites and fungus and bacteria actually growing on the fur. So again, that can actually help to determine how fit he is and whether the offspring of that male is more likely to survive. And that's basically what females look for. They look for these telltale signs that suggest that the males are going to be strong and therefore their offspring is going to be strong as well. But I must admit, I've never smelled a giraffe. And I remember reading something fairly recently from a couple of people that work with giraffes and also saying that they've never smelt the male giraffe. So it must be quite a subtle smell to the, or, or subtle difference to us, but maybe to a female, it's, it's a huge difference. So she's looking over there, but I think she's looking at the giraffe. Again, with their eyes being so high up, I mean, you're talking about four meters off the ground, maybe five for a male. They can see with quite a distance, got brilliant eyesight, and they can see over the tops of the trees. And she's watching something down there now. But yeah, no alarm calls. Nothing. So I think that was just the wildebeest spooking them, but I wonder why. Just trying to remember what happened now. It was the two giraffe, that was it. There was the two giraffe running and that's possibly what put the rest on edge and then the wildebeest came out of the drainage line and started running and then they all ran she's going to start making her way through the drainage line I think to get to the other side Gardenia. All oh, its branches twisting and turning. I have to keep a look out for the fruit. They're quite large actually. Very few leaves on them at the moment. sort of size, green fruits with grey spots on them. Okay, what I picked up. You can see the size of it, and that is a piece of giraffe dung. So, about a centimetre and a half. 
and if I can turn it into the sun you can see this little indentation which sometimes they do have but you can see on the other side it's quite rounded and sometimes you'll get a, an indentation on the other side but it does look fairly similar to that of the kudu but the kudu the end is tapered so it has a little point on the end whereas the giraffes it tends to be very rounded but tiny because they are a ruminant so they get as much goodness out of the food that they eat as possible so what comes out is waste whereas if you look at a rhino or an elephant a lot of goodness is actually wasted in the dung it comes out the other end and it's still there's still a lot of nutrients there so yeah that's the size of a giraffe dung probably one of the largest out of all the, the ruminants. Eland, probably just a little bit longer and almost like bullet shaped round at both ends. Thames block at both ends. Thames block as well, slightly larger. There you go, giraffe dung. Yeah, the wildebeest I can see are still there so they're not running away from anything either. False alarm. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Can you hear something? Mm. But the wildebeest uh, heads down eating. But I thought I heard a hyena in here. Maybe it was a hyena. Take a quick walk on this park. I heard the Franklin scratching around and they were, just as I moved around they, they heard me. I think that's possibly what it was. Oh well. Oh, two minutes. Wow, time gone. Time has flown. I keep forgetting we're starting a half an hour early. My brain's only just starting to wake up. We have to go for another three hours.
sanitizer gone? Oh, there it is. From Dawn. Thanks, Dawn. the drainage line there. Can you see it? I can, but it's high up. It's just there, we'll see. Yeah, I just need to move forward a little bit. What's wrong, little squirrel? Who have you seen? Something down there. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a fossil moment. Then. Andrew. Andrew, Andrew, come in. Oh. Andrew, uh, just keep a good look out uh, in the drainage line, uh, just where you are, because we had some Blumiti clambering steam uh, just a few minutes ago. I didn't think there was anything, but we've just had a couple of squirrels calling down here again. Okay, come on, thanks. I saw you over there. But now I can see in Vlamiti and uh, also Wobbly Beast. They are the next again, so yeah, I'll keep on looking. Maybe it's the next time I see something. Yeah, they didn't go far. I think they got spooked by the, the, the wildebeest, but they haven't gone far. But as I say, we did have a couple of squirrels just calling just then. Okay, thanks. Thanks, mm -hmm. uh, I can move. Uh, Okay, coffee, no matter. Squirrel's gone. Mm. Unless it was a snake. I think we got spooked by a snake. Go ahead. Just one, just before we w we headed out, but then there was nothing, and I haven't heard them since. But I did have their Conzos going through for the Munz Dip. Quiet. Hmm. Unfortunately, I think that one. Get just to the road, and then when I when you close off, I can just. Zoom in on the Kigelia. Okay. Go and visit the sausage tree quickly. I was convinced I heard a hyena. I've seen giraffe walk right up to cheetah before. You can check out who and what they are. Right. Can you see your... Can you see it nicely there? Can you see it nicely there? Kind of. Hmm? Not really. Where was the um, the flowers? Is it around the other side? Oh, have they gone already? Are you gonna uh, are you gonna I'm gonna go there after you close off? But I can go there now first. 
Oh, there's a crested barbet feeding on one. Oh, we're going to have to move. <laughs> oh, there's one, I can see. Sausage tree! There is a couple I can see now. There's one, two, three, three purple flowers. But it's starting to get a bit greener too. Mm, yeah, I can see there's one or two leaves on it there. I had bats calling in my roof, but it wouldn't be the bats that come to fertilise, to fertilise? <laughs> I really think I need to <laughs> switch my brain off and start it up again. <laughs> oh dear. Do you ever get one of those mornings where your brain just refuses to function? It definitely feels like today. Bob, it's gone. Oh well, unfortunately we are going to have to get the batteries back on charge. And hopefully my brain back on charge too. So that hopefully this afternoon <laughs> I'll maybe make a little bit more sense. But um, I'll have just a quick look just here, just to see if there is anything. If there is, then we'll let you know. But uh, we better save batteries now and uh, hopefully have a full drive this afternoon. I think Mark did fix the problem, so hopefully it was just that loose wire. But, uh, oh, well, there were several loose wires. So yes, that would be why there was a bit of a problem. But we do have to get the cow back on charge, so we have enough time between the two game drives. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your questions, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed seeing at least some interesting behaviour there from the giraffe and also Shivenzi and her little brother too and hopefully we'll be able to join them again this afternoon and uh, maybe even see Karula come back to take them to a kill and hoping she's going to be successful. It sounds like she's searching far and wide, let's put it that way, over in Buffleshook. So fingers crossed, lots to try and look for this afternoon too. But take care wherever you are in the world and we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.
Hello everyone, Sebastian here sitting in final control. All right, I can see in the chat rooms that most of the people are going to bed. <laughs> so wish you all a good, a good night and I hope you enjoyed the drive. It was nice to see the Cubs. Always nice to spend a bit of time with them. Can't wait for that little male to be named as well, uh, probably on Thursday. So we'll have Shivenzi and a new name for the little male. Uh, Tara will be on drive this afternoon at 3.30 Central African time and uh, Mark will be behind the camera. I'll be sitting here in final control and uh, directing the drive and forwarding your questions to Tara. So for those of you going to bed, then good night. And for the ones who have a day to look ahead, to look forward, then enjoy your day ahead of you. And I hope you'll be with us a bit later on this afternoon, 3.30 Central African time. But from now, for now, from myself and all the team here at Juma, uh, it's a goodbye and I will speak to you a bit later. Bye for now.